Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. <coughs> Amen. So today is Pentecost Sunday. Today we talk about the Holy Spirit, that elusive person of the Holy Trinity, who he is and what he does is a confusion to many Christians. And I think for many of us as well, I mean, if I were to sit down with any one of you and ask you, could you give me a clear and concise uh, definition of who the Holy Spirit is and what he does? You think you could give me a very clear understanding of that? It would be hard. I think we'd be hard pressed to find a lot of people who could do that. It's not like the Father and the Son. We know what they do. God creates, right? I believe in God, the Father, creator of heaven and earth. In Nicene Creed, he's the creator of things visible and invisible. Okay, we got that. And in Jesus Christ, the Redeemer, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified down was buried, just like we read. But this third person of the Holy Trinity, what does he do? All we have in the Apostles' Creed is that opening statement. And we believe in the Holy Spirit. That's it. Then it turns to the church. The communion of saints, forgive of sins, the resurrection of body and life everlasting. The Nicene Creed gives us a little bit more. It says that he proceeds from the Father and the Son. But it says that he spoke by the prophets. There's a little bit of something, a little nugget for us. He speaks through the prophets. It was he who spoke to Job, those words that we heard today in the Old Testament reading. That in the last days that he would pour out his spirit upon all flesh. But it sounds a lot like what Jesus said too. Verse 13 of our gospel reading where he said that um, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. But he won't speak on his own authority, but he'll speak what I have told him. For they all belong to him. So he's the revealer of God's word. That is God's truth. But what is that? Well, we have in John's Gospel, the very first chapter, first and second verse, where we have John saying, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And he was with the same in the beginning. Jesus is the living Word of God, the Word of God alive. And that's why he can say that he is the way, that he himself is the truth, that he himself is the life. The work of the Holy Spirit is to reveal Jesus to you and also to the world. And he does this through the use of means. How and where does he do this? Well, frankly, Right here. Through word and sacrament. Through the humble elements of bread, and wine, and water. And through the words of the text of scripture. In here. Through my feeble words. And out there, in the world, through yours. God is at work bringing people to know this person who says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's right. He uses me, and he uses you, and he uses all of us as part of his means. Because we carry with us his word. And in baptism, we also carry with us the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Who is going to remind us of everything that we've been taught and told. 
Make no mistake. What happens in this church is not because of Pastor Brown or because of us or because of the elements. You like this wine, but not that wine. Those little discs sometimes stick to the roof of your mouth. It has nothing to do with water and bread and wine. Or does it have to do with a book? It has to do with the Holy Spirit using those elements, making application of them through those means to his people. And unless the Holy Spirit reveals Jesus, my friends, no one can know Jesus. No one can know him on their own. How do I know that? Well, the Bible says so. That's one reason. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12, 3. Or we could say it the way Martin Luther said it in the third article of the Creed and the Meaning. Confirmation kids, you'll remember this, right? I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to Him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with His gifts, sanctified and kept me in the one true faith. In the same way that He, the Holy Spirit, calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth, and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, Luther tells us, he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is the work of the Holy Spirit among us. So it's no mistake that it just says in the third article of the Creed, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting, because that is where he's at work. He's at work in and among us through word and sacrament, drawing us to Jesus, renewing our faith. It's a pretty important job, wouldn't you say? If no one can come to Jesus without his leadership, without his guidance, he's pretty important. But he doesn't take the limelight. He just wants to direct us to the one who is the center of our faith, the one who took the cross for us. But it is he, the Holy Spirit, who introduces you to him. It is he who gave you the gift of faith that caused you to believe upon the work, the work of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins. It is the Holy Spirit who made you understand and to trust that Jesus died for you. It is He who makes you hear and to hold the forgiveness that Jesus won for you. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17. He has more to reveal to you about Jesus. He wants to tell you more and so... He is the one who reveals Christ through his word to us. He says, I have much more to tell you, but you cannot yet bear it, so I send you the Holy Spirit. He is at work through word and sacrament to help you to know him better, to trust him more completely, to rely upon him more fully, and to lean out upon His grace more faithfully. Salvation was won 2,000 years ago. But it is ours today, right now, by the work of the Holy Spirit in this place, working through these words, through these elements, at this time, for you, for the forgiveness of sins. He doesn't just reveal Jesus to you to the world, but also through you. That's right. It ain't just about you. It's about what he wants to do through you. You have a purpose, a divine mission that's just for you. I don't know what it is, but it's
It's the call of God on you. It's the drawing of the Holy Spirit to be involved in His Word and sacraments, to be the means by which people know the Word, hear the Word in your situation. And no one else can do what God has given and gifted you to do. <clears throat> Today is Pentecost. Let's pray that God the Holy Spirit would fill us to fulfill His mission. We pray today that He would strengthen us in the means by which the Holy Spirit would call, gather, and enlighten the world around us. With that in mind, I'll read one more verse of Scripture. And let that God's Word speak to you. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. Paul says, under inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Therefore we, you and I, are ambassadors for Christ. Making God is making His appeal through us. We implore you, on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. That's the message that He's entrusted to you and to me for the life of the world. Praise be to Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.